Hey, what's going on out there, YouTube family? This is Sammy Leggett here representing Team JVS. I'm back here again for another movie review. I just got done doing a review for A Quiet Place 2, which is going to be releasing out May the 28th, 2021, as well as another film that's coming to uh, Disney Plus if you do in the premiere and paying for it or going to the theaters. I'm talking about Cruella. Now, Cruella is a very interesting uh, reimagining, as it were, of the infamous Cruella de Vil from 101 Dalmatians or 102 Dalmatians or whatever the incarnation is. And um, this film basically goes and breaks down her origin story in an adaptation. So it's not the Cruella that you necessarily remember, but it's a very much so a lot that you do remember of her. And this is also an amazing cast because I was really surprised and caught off by who and what they were trying to say and do with this incarnation of the character of Cruella DeVille. Now, so off the gate, you got Emma Stone. Emma Stone is playing the role of Cruella, or technically um, her real name is Estella in this film. You've got other people involved in this. You got Mark Strong playing the role of John or the butler. Um, Kimberly Howell, um, Baptiste, she's playing the role of somebody really interesting. Um, I don't want to spoil the beans. Emma Thompson's playing the role of the Baroness, and the Baroness, she is a force to be reckoned with. And I mean that on every level, that Emma Thompson completely immerses herself into this role of the Baroness um, that is almost kind of like a foreshadowing of what we know to be Cruella de Vil. Uh, you also got Paul uh, Walter Hazer, as well as uh, Joel Fry. Um, Paul Walter Hazer plays the role of Horace, and then Joel Fry plays the role of Jasper. And then again, like I said, you have the amazing Emma Stone as Cruella de Vil. So what did I think about this film? And I'm going to say this, I was not anticipating you know, caring for this film, really, honestly, at all. Um, I was intrigued by the concept that Emma Stone was going to be playing Cruella de Vil. Just, just based on that concept, I was kind of like, all right, cool. I'm really intrigued by what she's going to bring out of this character because she's an amazing actress. She's also very charismatic and she she lights up every scene that she's in in any movie. So I was kind of like, what is this going to actually be? I am delighted to say that Cruella is one of my uh, most entertained and enjoyed and better films I've seen this year. It's hard to say it because I didn't anticipate it. I didn't. I really did not anticipate If you would have told me, wow, Cruella de Vil uh, is going to be a character that you care about. It's something that you're going to look at and be like, man, I want to see this movie again. I've seen this movie now a total of almost three times, and I will most likely look at it all over again. This is, to me, um, one of the best live action adaptations of a Disney character that they've come up with. And a big part of it has to do with the way that this is actually done. Because the director in this decides to do something different with this type of film. Um, it's not necessarily just for kids. Uh, Craig Gillespie directs something that I was like, man, Guy Ritchie would be impressed by this film. Because, in all honesty, the cinematography, um, the lighting, the coloring, the detail is so amazing. Like, there's shots in this that I was kind of like, especially when you start to see kind of Corella start to unravel. Like, in the openings of it, you're kind of like, oh, okay, you're getting the feel of who uh, Emma Stone is as Estella. You're getting an understanding of why she's in the position that she's in and where she's going to be leading to. You get, the, uh, you get that very early on. And I think that it, it progresses pretty well. But then you're kind of asking yourself, well, how does this person you know, who meets up with this person, Jasper, meets up with this person, Horace, end up in this position. And, and it's just excellently executed. Like, the thing about Emma Stone, and I'll say this, is that I can compare her to Christopher Reeve in him and his duality of being, um, of course, Superman, but also being Clark Kent. She is completely Estella and Cruella. 
Like, it's not just a clear cut. Oh, okay, Cruella is just this. This is what we know her to be. No, this film shows you, no, there are two different individuals that Emma Stone is evidently playing that you had no idea. And that's one of the most engaging parts about it because you, you want something to gravitate toward. You want something to kind of pull you in. And the movie itself, from an atmosphere standpoint, again, as I said, it looks beautiful. The transitions are great. It's edited well. And on top of that, when you start to see Cruella start to face off against the Baroness, that's when things start to get very interesting because you get to see what she's truly capable of. Not just her deviousness, but her skill. Because one of the things they say very early on is that as an early young child, she's genius and she's very smart and she knows fashion. She knows how to create and she's very inventive in what she's capable of in which we see that from a devious side but not to these links as a matter of fact there are moments where i'm watching this film and i know this takes place in like the 60s you know but it very much so has this modern-esque feel to it and i was like this is so i guess hip is a good word like it's it's, it's very upbeat it's very um plush and, and and it doesn't shy away from exploring the capability of what art can really be um even in the fashion world because the thing about this is i'll say this this movie is going to get nominated for costume design it might win it, it most likely will win for costume design and set design as well as some of the choices of cinematography cinematography is just so good and the way they edit it and the way they splice it they keep it the scenes look great, but then everything they overlayer it makes it engaging and interesting and eye popping. And that's hard to do. Now, another thing that I'll say about this film that I was really surprised by is the freaking soundtrack. The soundtrack in this film is so good that <laughs> I was kind of just like, that's where the budget went. Because I kid you not, if you can right now, you can go on... Um, uh, Apple Music right now, and I actually I downloaded it. Or if you have Spotify, or if you you know you have Google Play, they've got a all around amazing soundtrack. Like the soundtrack has hits from everything. I I don't, don't want to spoil some of them because the soundtrack and the way they fit them into the scene progression is genius. Like it's it's so good of a soundtrack, and I don't know what they had to pay for that, but it was. It was perfect. It fit this film. It fit the tone. It fit everything perfectly. But the other thing I was going to say about this is as much as I'm saying that, you know, visually it looks good. The editing is great. Um, it is lively. It's entertaining. There's also some emotion here. Um, there's, there's some things that both Emma Thompson and Emma Stone get to really chew on get to kind of just allow you to feel their emotion of their characters for good or for bad. And that's hard to do in a Disney film. And, and it's kind of like, because the way that the story progresses each character, whether it is Jasper, who I think Joe Fry does an amazing job as the role of Jasper. I, I kind of was like, this is very interesting. Even Paul, like his role as Horace, I think that they play to his strength. The another thing I will say that there's a slight, amount of cgi that they do use and it's with these dogs and i'm not just talking about the dalmatians dalmatians are actually undercutted in this for a specific reason you'll understand exactly what i say when i mean that but there are some other dogs in this that they use subtle cgi to make them feel like not disney characters but like something you would see from a Disney animated feature, like the way they move, the way they interact, the way they pay attention to her, the way they pay attention to them, the way they're interacting with the environment. And, and also some of it is practical. Some of the, these dolls are trained. They're doing very well. But a lot of it is just some carefully done, well done uh, CGI and the uses of them, as well as, again, when when the when the game starts between the Baroness and, and Cruella, you get to see a show. And it does not, it does not feel diminished. It doesn't feel cheesy. Um, it, it it actually works for me. And I think that 
this is not like a direct comedy. It's almost like satire. Like there's comedic moments that do happen, but more engaging is the competition or what's really being uncovered. And even deeper than that, and I, I don't want to spoil it, but there's a lot of tragedy here. There's a lot of hurt and there's a lot of pain. There's a lot of destruction. There's a lot of abuse. And there's things that are happening that if you don't pay attention to it, you know, as a kid, you're kind of just like, oh, well, this is really entertaining and it's really eye popping. But as an adult, you're kind of like, oh, I didn't know about this. And I think that's the beauty of this film. I rest this film at an eight or 8.5 out of 10. I really enjoy it. This is one of the most entertaining films I've seen in 2021. I cannot wait to watch this again. And I, and again, the fact is, we're talking about Cruella DeVille. Like, the woman who takes pleasure in, you know, torturing people or torturing dogs for her own enjoyment. And what Emma Stone and, and what Emma Thompson are able to do with these characters and what the the crew is able to do and what the director is able to do is very inspiring. I I tip my hat off to them and I think they did an amazing job with Cruella. Definitely go and watch it any way you can, whether it is going and doing it through the Disney Plus premiere. I think it's worth your money. I really do. If you feel comfortable going to the theater, you know, make sure you mask up, make sure you use safe precautions, procedures, um, definitely go and see it, but I would say that you just gotta watch it. Like you're gonna have so much fun with it. And I know you're talking about a character that's an evil character. You know, you're talking about a character that, from what we know, I mean, she's just really good at fashion. But it's more than that. And I think that they bring you along for this ride where you know it's not it's not what you think. I guess that's the best way to say it without spoiling anything. There's two sides to every coin. And the way that they handle the characters and how they progress together and what they mean, there's a lot of twists and turns all over the place. And another thing I really want to say is that if you pay attention, there's so many Easter eggs. And I'm not just talking about from the 101 Dalmatian lore, but just what the character Cruella is becoming what was happening and i think you're really going to be pleased by what you actually watch so that's all i got hopefully you guys enjoyed this review i'll talk to you guys later keep it locked jvs we ain't gonna stop have a lesson guys go see cruella immediately peace guys